And it is important for us to discuss this. Where many times it is seen that, or the question is asked, Ya Rabbi, what is the extent to which you can grieve for Imam al Hussein? What is the extent to which you can mourn for Imam al Hussein? When a person beats his face, when a person hits his chest in all its different forms and in all its different intensities, even if it led to bruising or even if it led to bleeding, can this be termed as extremism or extreme mourning or extreme grief for Imam al Hussein? The question that needs to be asked over here is, is there extremism in grief? What is the hub that you can go to when it comes to weeping and mourning for the man of Hussein? And you find that the hadith of our Ahlul Bayt and their seerah reflects a reality in regards to the adab and the akhlaq of Azadari. The historians mentioned that when Sayyidah Shuhada Hamza became Shaheed, <coughs> Rasulullah, when he returned back to Medina after burying Hamza, he wept for Hamza to such an extent that Rasulullah fainted out of his grief. Fainted. Fa'ughmiya alayhi. Ya Ahi. Have you ever seen in a majlis azar for Imam al Hussein somebody cries until he passes out and faints? This is adab and akhlaq of weeping for Imam al Hussein. Rasulullah wept for Sayyidah Shuhada for Hamza, Sayyidah Shuhada Hamza, until he fainted. Why? Because Hamza's body was decapitated. What if Rasulullah was in Karbala to see what happened to Imam al Hussein? Allah. You find that. Look at the manner and the intensity with which Imam al Hujjah cries for his grandfather. Ziyarat al Nahiyah, the day of Ashura. It is important and it's recommended for you to read Ziyarat al Nahiyah. Ziyarat al Nahiyah is a masa'ib. Narrated by Imam Sahib al Amr by himself, where he outlines what happened to Imam al Hussein on the day of Ashura. Ajib, Makhari, Ziyara of pain and Husn. Look at what Imam al Hujja says in a part of this Ziyara. He's addressing who? Imam al Hujja. He's addressing Imam al Hussein. He says, Fala in akharat min وَعَاقَنِي عَنْ نَسْرِكَ الْمَقْدُورِ وَلَمْ أَكُلْ لِمَنْ حَارَبَكَ مُحَارِبًا وَلِمَنْ نَسَلَ لَكَ الْعَدَاوَةَ مُنَاصِبًا فَلَأَنْدُبَنَّكَ صَبَاحًا وَمَصَاحًا وَلَأَبْدِيَنَّ عَلَيْكَ بَدَلَ الدُّمُوعِ دَمًا حَسْرَةً عَلَيْكَ وَتَأَسُّفًا عَلَى مَا دَحَاكَ وَتَلَحْقُفًا حَتَّى أَمُوتُ بِلَوْعَةِ الْمُصَابُ وَغُسَّةِ الْإِكْتِيَاءِ Imam al-Hujjah says to Imam al-Hussein, Ya Abha Abdullah, because I was not able to be in Karbala, because I was not able to fight against those who fought against you, because I wasn't able to be there to defend you from your enemies, I shall lament you every morning and every evening. I shall weep for you blood instead of tears. Oh. He goes on to say, until I die of this choke and grief, Ya Abdullah. You look at the grammatical structure of this hadith, or this is Yara. Wala abkiyanna alayka. Wala abkiyanna. Yani, taken from the verb abki. 
before this word abki there is a lam and a noon ulama of arabic grammar tell you this lam is a lam tawqeed and the noon is a noon tawqeed yani the imam is not exaggerating the imam is not speaking metaphorically literally the imam is saying i am weeping blood from my eyes yeah, in 1400 years, 11, 1200 years, the Imam has been in Qayba. He weeps with an intensity such that even in medicine, he is now established that you can weep so intensely, you can rupture these fine capillaries at the back of your eye such that you begin to cry blood. Kitab Darus Salam of Muhaddis al-Nuri, Rahmatullah alayhi. He says, one time a person comes to Imam al-Sajjan, he says to him, Ya Rasulullah, I became, or I, I'm a new Muslim. Imam al-Sajjan asks him, how did you become Muslim? Why did you become Muslim? He says to Imam al-Sajjan that I happened to be there in Karbala. <clears throat> Imam al-Sajjan asks him, what did you see in Karbala? The man begins to describe for Imam Sajjad how the head of Imam Al Hussein was lifted on a spear and how the women were tied in chains. The hadith mentions Fadarab al Imam, young Imam Sajjad, Fadarab Rashahu al Jidar. Imam Sajjan stood up in grief and hit his head on the wall until he was seen bleeding from his forehead. This is the grief of Imam al Hussein Ya'ari. He goes on to complete the hadith. And he said, When I saw this, Imam Sajjan was shocked. Imam Sajjan told me, Continue. The Rawi says Imam Sajjad sat in front of me with blood flowing down his head mixed with his tears from his ears while I continued the massage. <coughs> ya Akhi, this expression of grief through Azadani is in reality an expression of Ish. And the ishq doesn't have boundaries. Ishq surpasses the limitations of logic and rationality. Nobody can understand the ishq unless they have experienced this ishq. Which is why the poet says, Hubbul Hussein Ajannadi. The love of Imam al Hussein has made me crazy. Rather, the, another poet comes forward and he says, La, ya akhi. Your insanity for Imam al Hussein is the proof of your sanity. This is what we learned from Abis. What did Abis do on the day of Ashura? When he went into the Maidan, he saw that in front of him there are thousands of people. Abis, when he went into the Maidan, he showed that he's surrounded by thousands of people. He removed his armor, he removed his helmet, he threw it on the ground and he attacked the enemies. The enemies were dumbfounded, they began to scatter. Who is this madman, this Majnoon in the battlefield? People come with protective gears and swords and spears, he's thrown his weapons, he's charging us. They were scared of him. Omar ibn Sa'ad says, throw stones at him from every direction. They captured him by throwing stones at him. One of the enemies who was from the tribe of Hamadan. He comes towards the Abis and he said to Abis, Ya Abis, are you crazy? Do you not fear? You enter into a battlefield without your protective armor and without your helmet. Are you not scared you're going to get killed? Are you not scared of this pain? People throwing stones on you from every direction. Allah. Look at the answer of Abis. Abis lying down on the plains of Karbala, bleeding from every part of his body. He says to this enemy from the 
tribe of Hamadan, he says to him, Ma asab al muhib fi tariqati habibi sahlun. He says to him, what a lover experiences in the way, yani the pain that a lover is afflicted with and the pain that a lover experiences in the part of the one that he loves is sweet. And this is the stance and this is the emotion of every martyr. Every martyr who stands in the halqa asks him very tenuous. <coughs> When this person sheds blood from his head or he sheds blood from his back, what is he trying to tell you? He's trying to tell you when he sheds blood from his head. He is, this act represents a deep emotion and a sentiment inside of him where he's trying to say, Ya Abba Abdullah. I know that I am a sinner and I'm a mukassir and I am the worst abd. I am an abdun zareeb with all the sins I have committed. Ya Aba Abdullah, if I was there in Karbala, I would rather my head is struck before your head, Ya Hussein. Ruhi lak al fida. Expression of love. This person, when he hits himself on the back and he bleeds from the back or bruises himself with the chains or with the blades, what is he trying to say? Ya Akhi, this person is trying to say, despite my sins and despite all my shortcomings, if I was there in Karbala, I would rather my back is whipped before the back of Sayyidah Sayyidah was whipped. <laughs> this is his expression by us. <laughs> this is what I want to show my Mona. What's the problem with this? Why do we come and demonize these people for their acts? If we understand what it symbolizes. Why make a monster up <coughs> and put labels on them? And we understand, Ya Ali, at the end of the day, Imam al Hussein unites us. And yes, each person in this issue refers back to his Marjatakli. If your Marjatakli allows you, well and good, your Majat Taklid doesn't allow you each person to refer back to the Majat Taklid. But why demonize this party? Why ostracize this party? If we are concerned that it gives a bad image of people don't understand the manner in which we do Azam, then it becomes our responsibility to educate them. Those who are genuinely concerned and those who want to know these acts of ishq and these acts of loyalty make sense to anybody who is in love with Imam al Hussein. And then you have those institutionalized, institutionalized atheists and nawasib. No matter what you do, they will never be happy with you. And the Quran speaks about this last verse of the Quran before we start the Masa'ib. Inshallah, Sayyidina, there is no trouble, Inshallah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa alayhi wa Look at this on in Surah Al Baqarah, verse number 120. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَلَن تَرْضَى أَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعْ مِلَّتَهُمْ Go and research this verse number 120 of Surah Al-Baqarah. They will never be happy with you, no matter how much you compromise your faith, until you follow their creed. That in the Kalam over here is long enough, we will go way over our time. But, Qulasat Al-Kalam, the manner in which we mourn for Imam al Hussein, we need to acknowledge that there is diversity. We need to embrace this diversity. 
not make them reasons of splitting the ummah into half. And at the end of the day, we need to educate ourselves and educate those around us and have the spirit that Imam al Hussein unites us through the grief. We can have diverse ways of commemorating Imam al Hussein. This diversity should be used positively to create a synergy rather than destroy the unity within the Shia. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Oh,